going to start out by pouring in some milk and warming it up. And we're also going to be using a vanilla bean. If you've ever got a hold of like a what seems to be a low quality bad vanilla bean, you can still get a lot of flavor out of it by using a method like this. So just going to add the vanilla bean to this. While the milk is coming to a simmer with the vanilla bean, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the custard portion, which involves combining some sugar and cornstarch, and then just whisking them really well to combine. And then to this mixture, gonna whisk in some eggs that I just poured on myself. Not great. I'm gonna add in my eggs, and just whisk them in until there are no lumps. Okay, now that the milk has come to a boil, we're just gonna shut it off, cover it, and let it steep for about an hour. Honestly, this can go for as long as you want. If you're in a rush and you need to move it forward, an hour is a good safe minimum, but if you've got some extra time to spare, you can cover this bad boy up and let it steep overnight, and that'll pull out some really deep, complex flavor from the vanilla bean. Gonna come in here and fish out what was once a really brittle, unfortunate, dried out vanilla bean. Now it's gonna be all soft and easy to work with. So I'm just gonna split it open with this knife and I'm gonna take the knife and just run it down to pull out the seeds. Knock them into our egg mixture. Right now this milk mixture is not super hot so I don't have to worry too much about being really careful about tempering this in. So. Streaming it into here to loosen up our egg mixture. And now pouring this into here. So I'm gonna start out over low heat, uh, just to kind of help warm the eggs up slowly and gradually. And then once it becomes a little bit warm to the touch, then I'm gonna bring it to a boil. So it probably doesn't look like much, but I can feel just a little bit of resistance with the whisk that it's starting to thicken up, which means we're getting close. And the moment you see a bubble form, where's a bubble? Start a timer, go, one minute. Seven more minute timer. So during this one minute, it kind of goes through a couple different stages. Maybe at first, like right now, it's gonna look a little lumpy and gross, but just keep whisking. The goal of this is to neutralize a starch dissolving enzyme that's found in egg yolks that can cause the custard to turn soupy and thin over time. It'll eat up the cornstarch and prevent it from working properly. So the mixture will be 212 degrees throughout. So using a thermometer is not useful here. As long as it's bubbling, we know that it's 212 degrees. The idea is to hold it at that temperature for a specific length of time to help denature that protein. So that's all we're doing. And now it's gotten smooth and creamy and we're just gonna keep whisking. I'm just gonna keep whisking until the time runs up. And again, this isn't about going vigorously or hard. It's just about making sure the custard is not in constant contact with the pot. There we go. So when the timer's up, I'm gonna add the vanilla extract and whisk that in. Vanilla extract and vanilla bean are playing two different roles. So if you don't have a vanilla bean to infuse in the custard, you don't wanna add more extract. That's only gonna make the flavor taste a little bit harsh and unbalanced. We have this really, really thick kind of pudding. Kinda of hangs from the spatula a little bit. And I'm gonna pour it into a baking dish to increase the surface area and that helps it cool faster. I like to start out on low to keep it from flinging cold butter out into this world and then increase the speed from there. Now that the butter has whipped up all fluffy and light, it's time to add the custard. I'm gonna start by just scraping it with a spatula to soften it up a little bit because it's pretty thick and cold right now. Once it starts forming into a little bit of a softer mass, reduce the speed a little bit and just start adding it a little bit at a time. A few tablespoons. Okay. And after
after that last addition, I'm gonna scrape the bowl just to make sure there's no lumps of pudding and switch to a whisk attachment and whip it for a few minutes more. And the whisk attachment is just gonna help the mixture aerate more fully. Okay, that's been whipping for a little bit. And it's a extremely light and fluffy frosting that's thick enough to hang from the spatula without dropping down um, and hold a peak sitting up, but also soft enough that it's easy to spread and manipulate, which is really important for frosting a cake. And it tastes good, which is the most important thing of all.